Hi, Sam from Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts, and today I want to talk to you about, oh, my scooter won't move. Okay, one of the most common phone calls we get is uh, customers call up and say, do we repair scooters? Yes, obviously. And um, they have a problem with their scooter and they don't know what's going on with it. So nine times out of 10, it's uh, the customer will bring their scooter in and say, I've charged the battery and I've got to go on the scooter and it won't move. 99% of the time, it's the brake handle at the back of the scooter. Now, on all mobility scooters and power wheelchairs, they have a freewheel lever, brake lever. Some people call it brake lever, some people call it freewheel lever. But all of them have this brake lever at the back of the scooter or at the sides of the power chair. Some are located at the front of the power chair. Power chairs are different. They, they locate them all over the place. So it's kind of, we need to know what kind of product you have and then we can tell you where to look if there's uh, this common f failing that uh, people forget about they'll move the scooter around or whatever and they've or they'll catch the handle they'll they'll forget that they've caught it or somebody caught it by accident lifting it in and out of the car okay so i'll give you a demonstration on uh, one of our new scooters so that's basically what this little handle at the back here is as you can see let me zoom in so this handle here is your free wheel brake lever, drive lever, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes they are located underneath on some uh, models of scooter, like the Celex Transformer, Drive, Do It, and some Goldens have it where the handle's located. It'll be a red handle that you lift up and down. There'll usually be a sticker similar to this one, giving you indication of what to uh, position your uh, brake lever in. Neutral, unlock, lock, drive. Now basically what that means is when it's unlocked, it's in neutral, same as your vehicle. Put it in neutral, you can push the vehicle or push the scooter in this case. But when it's in the drive position, that engages the brake and then stops the scooter from moving. So it's locked. Even if you take the battery out, it'll still be locked. So it won't roll away from you. But if you do leave it in neutral position, maybe you catch the handle, not knowingly, and uh, or you move the scooter around in the house, whatever, and forget to put that handle back in the drive position, in the lock position, then the scooter will usually indicate either by a audible beep or a flash. On some of the drive products and golden products they have sometimes have a flashing light and that will give you a series of codes now in your owner's manual if you go to the troubleshooting section of the owner's manual or look it up online for your product it'll give you uh, information there about what those flashes or beeps are so if I turn this scooter on I know the brakes are locked now I'm getting an audible beep. Sometimes this little blue light here will flash, but that's giving me a five beep code. So I would then look up in the manual what that beep code is. I know from experience of using these things for years that I know that the brake is in the neutral position. And also when you turn the scooter on and if it's in the neutral position, the scooter will not operate. It won't go anywhere. It needs that in the drive position to drive. So basically what you would do, turn the scooter off, 
go to the back of the scooter, find where your brake handle is, pop it into drive, make sure it's locked into position, go back to your key, turn it back on, and everything's cleared. You can then move the scooter via the motor. So it's in drive, like your vehicle. You need it in drive to drive, it's as simple as that. Let me just move it back into position. I take, we take these uh, brake handles off while we put them in the showroom so we can pull, pull, the, pull the scooters out when we need to. Like I said, some of the uh, folding scooters like the Solex, the Drive, they have the brake handles in a di different position. So on some of the older scooters, um, and even some of the bigger scooters like the Monstrosity in the corner there, the e-wheels they have um, sometimes have a black knob plunger for want of a better way to say it that you would lift up and down some drives have that on the back of the scooter like the Phoenix HD uh, I think it's the EX I think they call it where they have a handle that you pull up and down uh, I think the Maxima the older Maximas used to have that where it was a, a pull handle with a little knob on top, not like a yellow handle or like a black knob, but uh, yeah. So look for that. If you get in an error flash or an error code or a beep sound, then that's what you want to be looking for. It's the most common phone call we get here at our store is my scooter won't work. And we usually just go through that process. Another one, is uh, you can check for if your scooter isn't moving is is the charger still plugged in now if you're using the manufacturer's charger they come with the inhibit actually uh, to inhibit the scooter from moving while that charger is plugged into either the charge port on the scooter or in the battery pack if the battery pack's not on the scooter then yeah, your scooter's not going to turn on, obviously. Yeah, but if uh, your charger is still plugged into you, your charge port on the scooter, and you try turning the key on, that's what the inhibit does. It inhibits you from using the scooter and pulling away with the charger plugged in. So that's the second thing we tell people when they give us a call, just to save them a, a trip out. So we go through that, check your brake handle, and also make sure your charger's not plugged in goes for the same for power wheelchairs they have a brake handle on each motor and on all of your power wheelchairs they all have two motors in them one on either side and that's what gives them their great turning radius so there's a brake handle on either side so now with the uh, power wheelchairs i'll show you on this one these have brake handles in the middle underneath the seat Again, this is a Pride product, even though it's called Jazzy. Jazzy is their wheelchair division, alongside with the uh, Quantum range. But um, yeah, these are your brake free wheel lever handles, as you can see there with that sticker. Give you an indication that if you push them forward, it's in free wheel, pull them towards you, you can actually drive the scooter. And the same on that one. Now on some older models, like the Jet 3, also made by Jazzy, which I've tried. As you can see on the motor there, you've got a little sticker saying neutral and drive, and this is your handle here. And then you would pull it towards you to make it go in free wheel neutral, and then push it away from you to put it into drive. Like I said, they're sometimes located all over the place on the sides, at the front, at the back sometimes at the, uh, the side at the front you know so all different places so look for that look for your user manual see if it gives you indication on where to look for that and as you can see there's one on each motor on either side now most of the newer wheelchairs will also give you an indication if your brake levers are are uh, released in the free wheel mode so let's try it on this one so these are in, these are engaged. So I'm gonna flick them both forward. So it's in free wheel. Turn on the joystick. Now you can see it's flashing there. Let's 
size. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So nine flashes, and then it'll repeat. Obviously, it breaks, so uh, count the flashes. Sometimes they'll scroll a set of scrolls. Even some joysticks will have a little symbol uh, illuminated just there next to the um, joystick controller, and that will flash a certain amount of codes telling you that there's some kind of error with the chair. That uh, I'm just going to put this back in gear, lift that back up so people don't trip over it. These joysticks also do have locks on them as well, so that's why I always say check your user manual to see what uh, flashes actually correspond to. That way you can actually self-diagnose it instead of bringing it towards having to lift a great big wheelchair into your car if you don't have a lift or even a, a scooter, having to arrange somebody to pick you up or get a taxi or whatever. But uh, yeah, we go through these questions uh, on the phone with most of our customers who have a problem and the ones that are, have got errors that are not explained then it's a case of having to bring it into store so we can diagnose it for you we diagnose for free up to the point of having to take things off of the power chair or scooter so uh, if it's nine times out of ten i can pretty much diagnose uh, what the problem is just by looking at it and doing some very basic checks but uh, if it goes too in depth and if there's uh, a problem that I can't identify then it's going to be an in-depth uh, diagnosis it's, uh, but we do do a basic diagnosis for free so something that a lot of uh, other retailers don't do it's uh, just so it gives you peace of mind that uh, we're not just trying to get money out of you we want to tell you what your problem is and, and try and fix it so yeah, all these scooters, all these power wheelchairs have an indicator code for you. Okay, just a few uh, tips to help us, to help you, is um, when you do call your dealer, your retailer, whoever, or even the manufacturer, there's some key things that you need to look for and tell them. So, if possible, always try and find the serial numbers for the for your product your scooter on each of the products there'll be a serial number now, usually this is located on the power wheelchair or scooter itself it's usually in a kind of hidden place but it's still accessible wheelchairs not so much it's uh, they kind of hide it under the battery cases i have actually got one here i can show you what it looks like but uh, on all scooters they, and all power wheelchairs, they should have a serial number. And that will help uh, your dealer or your uh, manufacturer help with identifying your product. There's hundreds of products out there, especially on Amazon and eBay and all those QVCs. And there, there's hundreds and hundreds of these different products. And trying to identify a scooter from when a customer says it's red and it's got four wheels it's kind of well that's kind of obvious so yeah identifying your scooter is the first key thing that we need to know is what its make is and what its model is not so worried about how many wheels and what color it is but it's make and model that way we can actually say if we can repair that or even diagnose it for you because we're not dealers of everything, of all the hundreds of products out there. Nine times out of 10, it's either batteries or they've left the charger plugged in or the brake levers undone. So yeah, have your serial number available if possible. You may find it on your paperwork, on your user manual. I do know with the Pride products, they, they actually put the sticker on their user manuals. But I'm not going to show you any of these because these are brand new scooters with active serial numbers. So, but on your scooters, but I'll show you on this one. This one's not active. Ooh. So just there is your serial number. But with the serial number, we could then look it up and tell tell us exactly 
what model of scooter it is and how many uh, wheels it's even got. It won't tell me what colour it is, but um, I'm not worried about what colour. But it will also tell me uh, when it was actually manufactured and what uh, other work has been done on that scooter in the past, if it's a used old scooter. Okay, power wheelchairs, their, their location of their serial numbers are a little bit more difficult. This is an old jazzy, and the serial number is just there. But most of the time, you'll have to remove this shroud, and it'll be located somewhere in the plastic, or even on the seat post itself, or on the frame. And that's how you would find your serial number. Again, on Pride products, it'd be a barcode. On Golden products, they tend to put their serial numbers underneath the floor mat. So just take a wander in here. So, so we've got a couple of Golden products here and what they do with their serial numbers is, if you can see, they'll put it underneath the floor mat and it's just this little sticker there, a silver sticker, it'll give you the model number, uh, this one's pretty well worn out, model number there, model number there, and then the serial number, and also on Golden Products they put your flash codes, so underneath your floor mat is your flash codes and tells you how, what to uh, look for if you have a problem with a scooter. Oh, found a penny, pick it up. Somebody's going to have some good luck. So yeah, that's your golden product. I'm just checking this is uh, in freewheel. And there you go. You can see your flash code there. So five beeps, brakes, disengaged. There's also an audible beep on this scooter as well. So that's uh, how the scooter will tell you what's going on. So, yep, your model number, and also, typically on all scooters, on your travel type scooters like these, there'll be the model and the manufacturer's name written on the scooter, unless somebody's destroyed it. So, this one is obviously a drive, and... Um, if the battery box has been replaced like this one is, I've had to replace the battery box. It's usually printed on the side of the battery box just there, like it is on the Pride, and that gives you your model. Now, drive products, they typically have a silver plaque there, and at the back somewhere, and also underneath the frame is where you'll find your serial number. So, a little bit more difficult to find on dry products because they tend to hide them. Let's uh, move that back. That's where you, some of your places you want to be looking for. So again, Pride products, they're written on the back of the scooter. You can tell it's written on the chairs at the front of the scooter. And then again on the battery box telling you it's a GoGo Elite Traveler Plus. Or the GoGo -Go Ultra X. So yeah, that, that information is pretty pertinent to us when you do call with any problems with your scooter. It's usually we need to know the serial number, the make, and model. And like I said, we don't need the color and we don't need how many wheels typically, but depending if somebody wants wheels, then we need to know if it's four wheel or three wheel, so on and so forth. But if it's a, an electrical fault or something like that, doesn't matter how many wheels it's got, it's an uh, electrical fault. So. Well, that about covers everything that uh, I think we need to help you. There are other things which I'll go into another video about uh, self-diagnosing scooters and power wheelchairs. But uh, for this video, to keep it uh, not too long, it's just a few information points that uh, helps us, help you, help get your scooter back on the road if there's something wrong with it. So... Look out for some other videos that I'm doing on uh, just information, question and advice sort of things like uh, vehicle lifts, I'm going to do lift chairs, stair lifts maybe, but uh, also some other points on scooters. So 
Till next time, bye now.